All right, so this is take two of this video. Uh, I think the microphone receiver uh, came loose on the first one and no audio was recorded. Uh, so I thought I would just uh, reshoot it again. So I have seen a few um, comments and questions around wiring up the Ultimate B. And I did find that was definitely one area uh, that they kind of just left it uh, open-ended. So I, I believe it's because there's so many different controller options and you can order it without a controller um, that they don't really have specific instructions. It's a little unfortunate um, and hopefully this video can help. Uh, one of the questions was around limit switches and their placement. Uh, so I thought I'd go over that and just kind of how I ran the wires and where I ran them and uh, and show the uh, connections back to the controller as well. All right, so uh, to start, the first question was around limit switches and placement. So I chose to have my machine, I'll just zoom out here, I chose to have my machine home to the back uh, right corner. So the Z will raise up to its max limit, the X will go over to the right, and the machine will home to the, to the back, the Y will go to the back of the machine. The advantage of homing it that way is that your spindle and your gantry gets out of your way so that you have full access to your spoil board to lay down material, get things ready, and then bring your gantry and your access, uh, your spindle um, over to the workpiece. Uh, it's the way I prefer to do it. There is lots of different ways. There's lots of different schools of thought, um, but I always preferred that. I had a, I started with a small machine, a little 30, what is it, 3018, um, and it homed to the front uh, to this basically this corner here um, and I always found that to be a pain because I'd home it and then have to move it out of the way to put stock down and things like that um, so after watching a few videos and some other people's thoughts on it um, I opted to change that um, to be the back corner as well so uh, if I come around to the side of the machine this is the uh, left hand side of the machine and there is my uh, Y limit switch so right now I don't have the machine powered up, but basically the on the Y, it's going to bring this um, block back and trip this switch. So as the Y gantry comes to the back of the machine, that um, bearing block will hit that uh, limit switch and stop it. As far as the cable goes for the Y axis, uh, I did find this one in the kit, at least my kit, I don't know if it's all of them, to be quite short. Uh, and in this case, because of the way that it's run and it doesn't really need to move, I left it outside of the cable chain. Um, and so what happens is it just, I have some printed parts I just haven't installed yet. Um, but basically I'm going to clip it so that it runs along the aluminum extrusion here and then down to uh, my controller. And then it plugs into the Y limit switch on the controller. Uh, but as you can see, there's lots of cable for the other, uh, or lots of extra cable for the other cables, but that one is just, like I said, it's pretty short. So uh, keep that in mind when you're setting up that mach your machine, or maybe you need a little bit of extra cable to make that work, depending on where your controller is and how you want cables run. Uh, but I did find the kit, that one was pretty short. So similarly on the X axis, what I did for that, is on the X, it does run up through the cable chain here, over here, and then instead of running through the cable chain, it's again just fixed to the gantry, runs along the uh, C-beam, and then it's just mounted here on this side. So that allows the um, gantry, the X-axis to come across, and again, it's gonna hit off of put the camera in there. This bearing block will come over, and hit that limit switch, and that is my uh, my max limit on there. Okay, and then coming back to the front of the machine on the Z axis, there's my limit switch here. So again, I've just used these 3D printed cable clips to clip it into the extrusion to hold it in place. I need to print a few more, obviously. Uh, but this, when it raises up, again, this limit switch is going to hit that bearing block and stop it. So to get your positions for this, uh, basically you're going to move your machine to the extents and 
that you, you know, you're manually, manually going to jog it over to your extents or you're going to use the uh, couplers and you're going to turn it or push the gantry, however you want to do it. But you're going to move it over to the extents and you're going to make sure things like your spindle, the limit switch itself, maybe your dust boot isn't going to collide when the spindle comes down um, here, right? You don't want to set your limits based on your spindle being up here because this is where it's going to cut. This is where it's going to interact with stuff. So if you set your X limit over further and this is your Z and it comes over and smashes into this, um, this rail uh, before it hits your limit switch, that's a bit of a problem. So you don't want that, right? Um, so make sure that you set your limit switches so that the machine is as close to how you're going to run it. And again, if you adjust something, if you put a new dust boot on, you may need to double check those limit switches and make adjustments to your uh, firmware um, or the actual physical uh, limit switches, move them a little bit so that it's not able to collide with stuff. So just keep that in mind if you do make changes. So those are my uh, limit switches. The uh, just sorry, I got sidetracked. The Z limit switch uh, runs down here through the cable chain on the X gantry and then along uh, through here along the Y gantry and comes down into the controller. So those are my three limit switches. I don't have, those are just my maximums. You can technically install minimums. I have not. Um, I use soft limits, so it does require that you home your machine. There's some pros and cons to that, um, but that's how I run my machine is with uh, the limit switches homed, and then I set soft limits so that the machine uh, stays within its boundaries. But those are things that you, know, you can play with um, as you get to know your machine. But that's what's worked with for me um, is limiting to, or homing to that back uh, right hand corner. Okay, so we'll go down to the controller. I can see I have my X, Y, Y2, and Z. And then back here, I have my limit switches. I'm using the outermost uh, connectors. So they're three pin connectors. I'm using the outer two most pins. So you can see this is the, that's the X limit switch, the Y limit switch, which there's just one of. That's normal. You can do things like square homing. Uh, you would actually connect, you would set up two limit switches, one on either Y um, axis, and then you would, um, you would actually connect both of them to this one terminal. And in the software, you'd make some firmware changes so that it would auto square. I don't currently have that set up. I think I might change my limit switches and do a few different things um, anyways. So that's a project for later. Uh, but right now with the stock kit, uh, this is how you would wire up your limit switches. And then the Z axis limit switches there. So you can see if I come down here, try to get that to, yeah, there we go. Uh, so you can see the main power is here coming in. So this is the 24 volt power off of the main power supply. And then I've got a USB cable here. And I have two additional sets of terminals. This is for the PWM uh, going to my spindle. And this is for the relay, again, going to my spindle. So this is for the enable disable on the spindle control. So this says, turn the spindle on, turn the spindle off. And the PWM sets the RPM. The reason to have both of those for a spindle is that I have a discrete on off um, based on the relay. So the spindle won't turn on unless it gets an on signal. Um, the problem with, in some spindles and some documentation, they tell you just to um, set the enable disable to the PWM. And the problem with doing that is if for whatever reason your controller puts out a PWM signal when it shouldn't, it will fire up your spindle. Um, so if it has an EMI issue or some sort of uh, interference, there have been instances where the spindle turns on um, when you don't want it to. So I, I made sure to make to do that so that I have an independent on off uh, separate from the, the PWM signal. I can go into uh, more with that if there is interest. Um, I also have the e-stop uh, connected. A little hard to see it back here, uh, but that's the e-stop back here. And that just comes out 
to the button here. Okay, and then on the side, I do have the probe uh, from the kit installed. I did do something a little bit different. Um, I never liked having uh, the alligator clip on the, um, on the end mill. I always worried about forgetting it or, or doing something weird with it. So uh, what I ended up doing is I grounded the spindle. So there's actually a, a ground cable running all the way from the spindle um, in this in this main connector, there's the three wires that are needed plus a ground wire. And the ground is just connected to the body of the spindle. And that goes all the way back and grounds out to the VFD. And then what I've done is I've, I'll wire this nicer later, but what I've done is I've just connected the ground from the probe to the ground of the spindle. So now the spindle is grounded. So rather than having to clip the alligator, clip to the collet or to the um, end mill, I just clip it to here, and then when I have my touch probe, um, as soon as I touch it to the end mill, to the spindle itself, it would actually ground out um, and see a signal, which is, which is awesome. So um, that part's pretty handy as well. And then, oops, I need to clean that up a little bit, uh, but I'm just running an Intel Nook PC uh, to control my sender software. So that is the, um, yeah, that is the wiring and the, the way I've set mine up. Um, so I do have, you know, mostly using the cable chains. The exceptions are the Y motors are not running through the cable chains. Again, because they're stationary, they just run out the back. I will put some cable management on the side and tie those up. And the Y limit is not in the cable chain. And then the X limit is only partially in the cable chain. It only goes up to, uses the Y cable chain, and then by, basically bypasses the X cable chain. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, hopefully that uh, that answers some questions on how you could wire yours up. Uh, again, there's lots of different possibilities. That's just how I've chosen to do mine. Awesome, thanks guys.